Um, but yeah, he says he doesn't know very much. Uh, Vincent apparently thinks that it could have been a fireball spell, but Ghent is no expert on magic. Do you know the identity of the gnome that was uh, killed in the blast? No clue. And that's going to be a question that he asks each of you in turn. I, we, uh, I didn't, did I? <laughs> no. Then. No, you, it seems like none of you have seen this guy before in your life. No, he's a regular. A regular? No, I don't say that out loud. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Not cipher bonus. <laughs> uh, what 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 information does Natara vol volunteer? This will be funny. I, I went into the library like when I heard the footsteps, unless one of the other people there like points towards me or mention that I was there. Like I'm not going out. I don't like talking with the city watch if I can possibly help it. <laughs> okay, then Natara's not involved. Uh, Alton. Uh, Alton will share his suspicions about the real cause of this explosion. Mm -hmm. And how he thinks that it might be related to the Grand Spore Conspiracy. Also, he lets uh, Pantaloons know during the middle of this that uh, poison cor and corrosion both rhyme with explosion. <laughs> eh, they're half rhymes. Okay, I have to. Oh, oh my god! I just saw this in the. I just saw what just got posted in the Discord there. Oh my god! It's fan art of Pantaloons. Oh no! It's Pantaloons fan art. Okay, okay. I. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm derailed now. I. The pantaloons, you've found your audience. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it, it's in the full party chat. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> but I, I I have to change my window because that is no okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Alton will answer any questions posed to him, and he will uh, answer any questions not posed to him, and explain <laughs> the entire conspiracy. So they they don't seem too receptive to your uh, to your uh, to your theories of mushrooms. So I, I need to know, like, I, like, do I think that they're involved in the the conspiracy? Because like I, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think that the the, the city watch is involved in in the conspiracy because none of them seem to care. <laughs> the only people that seem to care are you guys, and especially pantaloons. Pantaloons is my most steadfast ally. <laughs> they, um, Sergeant Cromley just kind of says, he, he, he kind of waves a, waves, waves kind of a hand and says, trust in the watch. We've investigated these kinds of things before and they will, and rest assured citizens that we will get to the bottom of this. Alton slams his hands on the ground and says, You've investigated mushroom-related things before! May I please have access to the files? Just very loudly. Because loud, uh, you did this. This is this is your fault. I have to scream. Again, thanks them for their service. Alton, make a, per make a persuasion check. Does the City Watch have oh, mushroom-related <laughs> files? God, I hope so. <laughs> Uh, that is a uh, nine. Unfortunately, they don't seem that they, they don't. They have not investigated any mushroom-related uh, incidents hmm. in the past, and also they don't seem very inclined to tell you much about this in, this investigation mm -hmm. either. Hmm. Can't trust the fuzz. Fuzz is fuzz is a sign of uh, mold. 
It absolutely is. And if none of you have anything else for them, they'll they will take their leave of you. Uh huh. I invite them to come back after their shift today and try a delicious chili sunrise. <laughs> so what's next? Uh, okay, as soon as they're out the door, Gent is gonna lay into pantaloons because as soon as anyone talks to Vincent or the boy. The guard is going to be in this room, tearing the tavern apart. Okay, so I, I, I go, go downstairs and I ask when the last saw uh, Volos. I've seen Volos recently. Uh, last time I saw Volo, he gave me a gold to run a campaign. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm starting to feel really suspicious about this. You know, Volo, he has refused. He has refused to to pay me back what is mine. And now he's trying to kill us. We need to call him here and we need to torture his information out of him. I feel like that's the worst possible idea we could possibly do. I like Spend the idea of... So we can keep him alive for as long as possible. I like he's the idea of calling him. Volo here. But maybe let's not torture him? I like the idea of torturing him. Why shouldn't we torture him? Listen! Just try to stop Hatara. the Hatara should go uh, spend time with Rashal while we talk to Volo. Don't worry, spent, right? Do not worry, Hatara. We will, we will make sure that you get your... Whatever you've asked for him, eventually, as soon as he is able to provide it, you must have patience. Patience. He doesn't cut it anymore. He betrayed like, me. It's literally been like a week. Oh, it's been several months. No, it hasn't. Yeah, it kind of has since you first met him. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, probably about a, it's probably been about a month. He hasn't given me a smidgen, and like I reminded me of this time and time again, but he just completely ignores my signals. I don't even remember what Hatara asked for. To him. I'm I was asking passionate. for advanced research notes, and Volo never definitively agreed to that, but did it's... promise a copy of his first uh, of his next book. Yes. When it was written, I remember yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Is Hatara able oh, I to? I when it was written. Is Hatara able to help identify the source of this necklace? Anyway, um, I don't really have any specific spells to do that, but I can use my library to try to figure out um, what this necklace is. Yes, that's what we should do then. So and then we'll like find out where Volo got the necklace and why he used it to blow up our front door. Is, is that our Anacaran check? Just check with the DM? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, make an arcana check. I'll assist with this. Do you have the necklace handy? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a 23. Okay, uh, yeah, it's definitely a necklace of fireballs. It's him. He based, did it. Based, based on the circumstantial evidence that you have, it is definitely a, a necklace of fireballs. Yep, Volo just tried to kill me. Do we know how to use it's it different. at all? I, I'm confused. I missed, like... Alton's like, I'm confused. I'm missing a thing. Why do we think Volo is trying to kill us now? We don't. Because he, because he doesn't want to want, want to give me his, his notes. And he's, he's afraid of me. I can feel it when he's close to me. I can smell his fear. <laughs> yeah, he's not alone. I think that's the mushrooms. And Alton, Alton sniffs his underarms. He says, they can get a little fruity. Oh we tell him that there's a problem with, the, with this place, and, and we need his help, and that will pay him. I'm sure he'll come. We figure it out from there. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, lay, lay, lay a trap for him. No. No, not right. that. Distinctly not that. How about we just invite him over for a chilly sunrise? Uh, that's, that's a much better idea. And then I, then I, then I chuckle a bit. Yeah, let's. <laughs> How about we lock Hatara in a closet? I'm okay with that too, but distinctly not the same closet that the necklace is in. 
<laughs> Pantaloons will go deliver the invitation to Volo that we're giving him a free chilly sunrise on the house. So he, he accepts also... your invitation on one condition. I'm going to give you three guesses to what the condition is, and the first two don't count. No, uh, worry. Hitara guess. definitely not in a closet. There you go. There's a good lad. I'm, so, I'm going to invite Hitara to go visit Rashal to buy more books, but I have no money to offer. What? So. I don't have any money either. I have an idea. Hatara, I need you to go downstairs into the uh, cellar and get the ingredients for the chili sunrise for me so I can make it. Get it yourself. Please? <laughs> I would like to show you the, how to make this so you know. Actually, I what if... I, I, Panelus is pitching this to Volo. What if there was a way for Volo to walk in the tavern... Without having to put on a disguise and get Hitara off his back. <laughs> I haven't finished my book, if that's what you mean. No, no, see, because what she wants is, like, some non-specific information. And Pantaloons is very, very good at organizing nonsense. <laughs> so Pantaloons okay. is going to spend the afternoon drafting... I guess Volo will have to rewrite it in his, like, perfect calligraphy. But just this mm -hmm. nonsensical, arcane explanation of, a, like, a creature that skulks the streets at night. Something that's going to take her months and months to unravel the secrets of. <laughs> and then have him deliver it to her. Make an arcane techno babble check? Exactly! <laughs> okay. Um... Hatara, make a uh, make an Arcana check, uh, and well, uh, I really get to... hope I, I roll a one. Honestly, <laughs> oh no, this does a thirty-three. I have to get picking this out. Okay, it's probably just going to take me two months. <laughs> Volo Volo hands the information over when he arrives, and is he going to arrive? Really... Just. Uh... Because I had, like, a plan for that. I'm trying to... Yeah, he does, and he... he, he he's still very... He, he still very clearly wants to not be in your presence right now. I, I, I want can... you to know that if you start casting any spell, Gent is going to put a hand over your mouth and do his best to bind your arms. Like, and if you Does set you trap... Did spell uh, when he arrived? <laughs> any spell. <laughs> If he sees you try to cast a spell, he's gonna put that down. I just, okay. I I half expected him to say that Hatara was like had set a net above the door, but that's not something. <laughs> that's not her style. Just just to move things on, uh, Volo yeah. doesn't have any information to to impart over the. Uh, over the um over the incident uh what do you tell him about the incident <laughs> i tell him that we know that it was a fireball created by this magic necklace that we now have and have not turned over to the guards and also please don't and tell he the guards looks extremely worried <laughs> and he says you should probably turn that over to the guards although that might be... if you give it to me i can turn it over to the guards because oh yeah you would like that wouldn't you Alton, uh, Al Alton says yes here, and he snatches it from Pantaloons and gives it to Volo. And he See, goes this what? way. I'm assuming you told them that the City Watch has already been in here and interviewed all of you. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the way Volo sees it is like if you guys go waltz again, turning over this necklace after having been interviewed by the sergeant and the magister. <laughs> that <laughs> it would. Why didn't you turn this over in the first place? So, and he will make up. He will make up a story about how he found it. Okay, but keep in mind, police man's name is General Fartbutt. Don't laugh at him. I oh, you actually... mean Barnabas Blastwind? Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Volo takes his leave. So before Volo leaves, uh, Alton does have one question for him. Okay. So, Sir Volo, where? 
where where would we be able to like purchase an item like where would one procure an item like this who like who in the city would manufacture such a thing someone who's who wants to i have no this is a very dangerous thing alden i wouldn't know who would uh i wouldn't know who would do this but maybe you're asking the wrong questions there would the Zentarum be using such a thing? And like, just as loud as he can. No volume. No. <laughs> like, he just screams it and like, just holds his fist in the air. Not their style, I don't think, but... Hmm. Weren't there dead Zentarum in the blast radius? Yes. Yeah, there That's was one. There right. were. It would be more likely that the Xanathar were responsible. That's a, that's a good point. And I totally... Did not just forget the Zen the Xanathar existed. <laughs> so going to demand that Xanathar himself personally pay for the damages, even though Gent does not know that Xanathar exists. <laughs> make a um let's see, uh Gent, make a wisdom ten check. Since you you questioned one of the eyewitnesses. Net twenty. You spoke with the woman who was who was uh, who was paying a call on Vincent earlier, and she said something that kind of kind of twigs in Volo, what he uh, twigs in Volo's uh, idea. He says, "Oh, a, a puppet, a puppet that uh, a puppet without strings, uh, shaped like a man. That sounds like a nimble right, I would think. And, and you might what's a nimble right?" <laughs> A nimble right is. Let me actually get the description out here. Way better right than a is, nimble wrong. Is a magical construct, uh, made a, made mostly of wood, powered by magic, and it can pass for humanoid when it's got clothing on. But he you says that that. Wood. Yeah. And Patara, you said that you saw a cloaked figure run toward the carpenter. It happened to be some... Yeah, I heard from some place. <laughs> <laughs> About some cloaked figure, probably Volos. Right. No, it's, it's too, too right. tall, probably. <laughs> oh, wait, if you're, if you're just is Volos still there, or has he left, actually? Uh, he's, he's still here. He, he, said, he's, he gives you suge a suggestion. Maybe, perhaps... You might look at the uh, one of the main manufacturers of the uh, of these of these con constructs, uh, the House of Inspired Hands. It's in the Sea Ward. It's uh, attached to the uh, Temple of Gond. What what is Gond a temple of? Uh, like what is he a god of? Just curious. Gond is a uh, is a god of. Uh, Basically, kind of a, a mechanical work workmanship. Okay, that sounds like a wonderful idea. I think we should leave soon and go over there and check that out because and I I will turn this necklace over. That's, yeah. Thank you, thank you for that. I I, I, I actually have one, have one question for Volos. Oh no. Uh, so um. I, I only have one question for you, and then I cast Minor Illusion um, to say as loud as a lion's roar. Uh, <laughs> you, when you, you, when you start Minor Illusion, when you try to <laughs> when you start casting a spell, he he's got a spell focus in his own hand, and he looks extremely nervous. Like uh, yeah, I, I, I cast Minor Illusion um, I as loud I, as, a, as, a, as a lion's roar. <laughs> Next to him, um, basically, where is my information? And then I sort of add in my normal tone of voice, and 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 when it's finished, doesn't cut it anymore. <laughs> and then I just sort of stare I'm at him. To still see working on it. I'm still working on my book. And he bid, he bids you adieu. Give, give give me a time. Give me a give me a date. This is that's all I need. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just. Otherwise, you could be finished after I'm dead. Hatara, Hatara, like, give the man his time. You do not want poor information, do you? 
If he I just rushes... Me. Well, but you don't want him to give you subpar information. You want... Like, it, the information is worthless, and you end up with nothing if he gives you wrong, badly your researched, friend, rushed your information. the truth. I, I just want the information that is owed to me. That's all I ask for. It's coming, don't worry. And it never let it be said that Volothomp ever reneges on a, de on a debt. And he leaves. You really are. Very pointedly. He, you know, he flees. Closes the door. <laughs> He fled. I, 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 I smile a bit to say, ah, that was fun. I, I feel, I'm feeling a bit better now. Now, okay, so what's the us. plan? Pantaloons, well, the plan right now is Pantaloons needs Hitara to cast Mending on his pillow again. Okay, I think so. <laughs> and then we I go to the Seaward? So, okay, here's what I heard. In this town, we can buy magical, like, puppet constructs. <laughs> and and now... yes, they are, they are used for uh, ce celebrations, especially in the fall. Can we get one that plays piano? No, that's my job. I gotta buy the piano first, one thing at a time. But you can't, you can't play the piano. <laughs> but like, it's just an interim thing. And then we have, then we get him a little bowler hat, and we have him ten bar. Gosh. Oh my god! You can't give him a bowler hat because he's got to be wearing pants because it's gonna be Pantaloons Junior. <laughs> the bowler hat ruins the <laughs> whole experience. All right, I'm going to the Sea Ward. <laughs> All right. The, everyone's going. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, so I'm, I'm dragging at least one person who can cast a healing spell. <laughs> That's literally just me. <laughs> so it doesn't take you guys long to find the uh, the House of Inspired Hands, which is kind of a cross of between a temple and a workshop. Um, the holy symbol of God itself is is a toothed cog with four spokes and and it's displayed prominently uh above the uh above the doorways okay um, um up above the uh up, up at the top of the on the rooftop of the building you see a silhouette of a humanoid shape it's perching up there it extends an arm and releases a tiny metal sparrow into the sky it does a few loops in the air and then darts right toward you please for me roll initiative I have to. Stick on you. Oh, good. That could have gone a lot worse. Oh, wow. That's an 18. <laughs> the best roll initiative roll I have. To... Oh. Okay, you should go to okay. 19, though, because I got. The 17. <laughs> Alright, so... Pantaloons, what do you do? It's just this little sparrow? Yes, okay. this little metal sparrow is just dive-bombing at you. Not really sure who, it's just kind of heading in your general direction. But this looks like a creature, right? It looks like it was fired from a weapon or something? Like it's flapping it its like wings? A, yeah, it's like flapping its wings. And it's dive bombing at me. At one of you. Oh. I'm not really sure who at the single. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to grab the pantaloons off my head. Mm hmm. And I'm going to hold, stretch them out like a bag. Okay. And catch this right. bird and then drop to the ground on top of it so it can't get away. All right, so you're going to ready in action to do this. Sure. Okay. Uh, Alton, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. I'm just, like, admiring the bird. I was like, wow, look at the bird! Hatara, <laughs> what are you going to do? I make a minor illusion of, like, a stick, like a bit above our heads. Okay. So it'll land on the stick and fall on us? I guess it's, it's a trick you always <laughs> use with like, with, with like birds. They try to like attack the highest point, so you hold a, like a stick up so that they attack that instead of your heads. Again, like what do you do? 
Uh, what I want to do is assist Pantaloons in his action, but what Ghent is going to do is ready an action to smack this bird with his glaive if it does any damage to anyone. Okay. Uh, let me roll a d4 real quick. <laughs> a d5? Should be a good um, stick. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. Ghent. Mm hmm. Uh, actually, before that happens, uh, Pantaloons, your, uh, your rated action goes off. Okay. What do I do? So I want you to, I want you to make a two-hit roll without proficiency, because you're not proficient in pants. I beg to differ, <laughs> sir! <laughs> yeah. Now gonna... wait here! <laughs> it's not your character sheet! Hold on, it will be. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> How does pants not count as simple weapons? <laughs> Alright. No, this is fine. Without permission, just make it to hit weapon. roll. Uh, we're looking at a... 14. And, uh... Ooh, just missed. So, again... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, no, you're... 16. Because I'm not subtracting oh. anything, I'm just not adding my proficiency. Oh, then, yeah, it's you do actually swoop 16. it up. It, it starts driving again, and you swoop it up, and... In your pants, and it, uh, it wrestled to the ground. And I start yelling out, MAGIC PANTS! MAGIC PANTS! <laughs> um, yeah, fall prone on top of my pants with the bird inside. And you hear a cracking sound and crunching, as you do. And there is no movement underneath your pants. I stop shouting my magic pants. <laughs> Good work. And I start to look... <laughs> around sad like maybe i've made a mistake when you pull the pants off the ground you see bits and pieces of mechanical bird falling out of your pants that's a sentence that's not been said before well uh, i think it's a bit, bit too far for menting i make a little pile of the bird parts and make sure there are none like sprogs or sprockets when i put my pants back on my head uh, does you're it like fine. to investigate the, the bird parts? Like, do I see anything magical or anything strange about them? Like, I'm not a mechanic, but just... The, seem... the the magical component to it seems to have, uh, once once uh, once Pantaloon's damaged it, it looks like it's no longer functioning. It seems to be kind of a temporary kind of a thing. So, was it clearly attempting to attack me? Um, you don't see the figure anywhere up there. Uh, make a perception check. Uh, that's not gonna be a lot. Where's At advantage, it? since you were watch, since you were looking up in that direction for the, in preparation of your, uh, your held action there. Oh, that's much better. Uh, 19. Uh, yeah, you do notice that after he let the uh, sparrow go, he ducked into some kind of hatch on the roof. Is this the roof of the building that we're standing at? Yeah. Hmm. At the at the temple. So who's going to touch the goblin? I suspect that our presence has been uh, announced. Mayhap we ought to stick together. I tell Gent not to worry that the magic pants will always be there for him. <laughs> that is unusually comforting. <laughs> so, do you guys walk into the uh, into the temple? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Although we're a little more on guard than we would have been. In, like, I thought we were going to go in and start asking about puppet people. Right. Gen keeps Gen's... a hand on his weapon as he opens the door. Inside the temple is of like 200, two dozen or so marble pedestals. Each of them has some kind of uh, some kind of invention or device of uh, prominence with, uh, with, with plaques kind of describing each of them. You got stuff like a uh, a wooden flying machine that has wings that flap when it becomes airborne. Model of a mechanical dragon turtle has a brass plate affixed to it. Okay. What's the that nearest the, one to the door? Like when we walk in the, on my left. On your left? Mm -hmm. 
is a miniature model of a red submarine shaped like a manta ray that has a brass plate affixed to the pedestal that reads the Scarlet Marpianoth. Beautiful. And we're Let... we're relatively sure that that person attacked us. Like this bird was meant to attack us, right? That's the, the assumption we're making. Asking everybody I'm else. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not no, gonna I'm asking these nerds. <laughs> <I... laughs> yes. Okay. It, uh, it sure it, seems to be interested in doing some damage. Okay. Something hellish that you can see. And a priest kind of walks into walks in as you uh, as you're looking at the uh, at the various knickknacks and devices in the area in in the in the entryway. Uh, a, a a dragonborn woman with bronze scales. Mm -hmm. uh, she she uh, she uh, introduces herself as Valletta. Alton holds she's up a, his hand. Oh, she she is a priest of Gond. Okay. Uh, Alton holds up his hand to everybody else in the party and says, "Gentlemen, let me please handle this. Madam, we would like to lodge a formal complaint. We were attacked by." Uh, Mr. Loons, please, if you will, show her the evidence. Yes, I, 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 I cast message to her um, to say, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about him. He's, 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 a, he, he's, a, he's a bit crazy, but he, he's, he's pretty harmless if you're not uh, attacking him. I, I feel like I'm going to be hung up on Mr. Loons for a while. <laughs> Alton has just always thought like Panta was your first name and Loons was your last name. It's like, is your surname? What's her response to that? Like when we um, we're here to lodge a complaint because one of their people just attacked us. Do you show her the uh, the 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 wreckage of the sparrow? Sure. She looks at it for a minute and it says, "Oh, that's that's Nim." A, a building. A, a bil uh, Let me guess. Somebody the, the, up upstairs, up on the up on the roof. That is correct. Yep. The pantalons broke it. Valletta sighs and uh, she start. Uh, she says, "Come with me. We can. I. I we can come uh, question the. Uh, we can come. I guess question it. Um, it doesn't speak, but I do have a, have a have a sign language that I can use to communicate with them. And so she leads you up some spiral staircases to toward an attic." And uh, the attic is locked. She she looks at she looks up at this at the at, when she tries to open the door, she sees that she can't. She notices the lock. Says, That's never been there before. Referring to the lock on the door. Yeah. I bet I can open it. I don't think you'll like how. I'd rather you didn't break the door down. Gent knocks. You hear knocking on the other side? In response? Shave and yep, haircut. Same pattern. Same pattern that you knocked. Reach forward What's and that? knock rhythmically. Like a... And he matches that. And, and the, the knocking on the other side matches that rhythm. And Alton screams, if, if you are in distress, please knock three times! <laughs> Do you want your bird back? Uh, make a persuasion check at advantage. Me? Anybody, whoever, whoever thinks they can make it. Hey, Pantaloons, what's your persuasion? Because, Plus four. because Valletta is also uh, trying to Get get is also assisting you in this regard. Yeah, I, I vote Pantaloons makes this check. Okay. At advantage. Yep. So our rolls have just been so fantastic today. It's gonna be a twenty-three, champ. And eventually, you do you do with some coaxing and uh, some some pleading. Uh, the door it eventually does unlock and uh and yeah you do see the uh you do see the the little wooden man kind of just 
kind of cowering behind some 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 boxes and whatnot up up in the attic. Is that the little man that Gent saw? Yep. This is him. Step into the room. I'll come in. And uh, what the, uh, how is he responding? Or like, the, is he cowering in the corner, or is he just like sort of looking curious at his shirt? Or he, he's cowering at this at this moment. And Valletta is Valletta has has some acolytes come up and just kind of going through these through these through the through the various knickknacks and tools and other kinds of stuff right there. And uh, she's question, and she questions him, and is kind of receiving uh, information back from him through through the through the sign language that they share. And she says that that the that this little nimble ride has been building other other constructs like him to, uh, kind of, I guess, alleviate its loneliness. This is like the gray goo problem, right? So. First of all, I guess we give the broken bird pieces back to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I really want to know why he threw a, a, a mechanical bird at my friends. I, I, I cast message and ask him why he threw a mechanical bird at us. Or, why, or, or, or rather, why, why the mechanical bird attacked us. Uh, he cannot us. respond to you. He cannot That's respond right. to you. What's the try? I'm going to ask Valletta why he's so scared. He... And they sign back and forth for a little bit, and she says, "I really can't. I really don't understand it. He, I'm really not sure exactly what he he's he's afraid of. Um, let's see here. Some." He says that I gotta, I gotta refer to something else in here. He says that uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to He says that he was he says that he was at a manor in the neighborhood of your of your establishment it looks like I'm assuming that it, Troll Skull Alley is that's that's where you that's where a lot of you are are based out of Gent nods seems to check out Tatara would you mind making a couple of illusions covertly for our eyes only and he gestures to include Valletta and Nim I, I cast I cast message and uh, and say yes yes I'm, I'm, I'm coming just stay, stay quiet and then I cast a minor illusion of um, of as as I go after um, uh, <laughs> uh specifically the signs of these interim and the xanathar i want to know if nim recognizes them he very clearly I... recognizes the uh the emblem of the of the xantar yeah. okay does he seem like he's scared of it or um yeah well, more like he expresses familiarity with it more than he's scared of it And then, these, uh, these and then yeah, and then yeah, the the priest the the priest signs back and forth with a little a little bit, and then she says she he's mentioned he mentioned something about he, he I, I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm still kind of 
I'm still not, not quite versed at some of the thing, at some of the concepts he's trying to convey with this. But it's so, uh, it's something about House Grawland. Um, go ahead and make a history check, any one of you. I'm pretty good at history. Not great at rolling though. Um, okay, um, that <laughs> is a uh, that's a seven. You are aware that House Grawlhund is a fairly well-to-do family, uh, a, a, a noble house in that happens to live in your neighborhood. Okay. And it basically a, a couple of blocks away from your town. They've never they've never made patronage of the uh, of of uh, Trollskull Manor, but you do know that you do know that the that this that this noble family is a known quantity in the city. They're not connected to Reynar in some way that I know of. Not that not that he not that you know, but considering that the Zentarum did kidnap Reynar. I con I convey that information to the rest of the team. What does the priest or little Pinocchio boy here know about the fireball necklace? I'm going to whisper to Pantaloons, we're not supposed to know that exists. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hypothetically, wink, wink. <laughs> and then same question. Nim and uh, Nim and and Valletta uh, sign back and forth, and then she says, "I apparently the necklace is the property of Lady Grawlhund." Interesting. How does Pinocchio know that? Potent weapon. Oh, you've been very helpful. Thank you, Pinocchio. Yeah. Nim has been. Uh, Nim has been hanging, has been, has been going, coming, and going with that place. Apparently, she's made a friend of Lady Grawlhund. He's made a friend of Lady Grawlhund. Allowed to leave? This is incredibly weird. Okay. Gent coughs. Uh, what race are the Grawlhunds? Uh, human mostly. What's they've been doing together? What's, there's, what's... There's, do, they, do they communicate the sign language as well? No, that's just because the the Pinocchio man doesn't have a mouth, I assume. Yeah. One of the tools uh, that Nim hands you, one of the little devices that Nim hand, hands uh, uh, Pantaloons, this little thing, it's probably about a meter, it's probably about, not, not a meter long, about a foot long. And it's got this weird, like, little weird, like, all these little, like, knobs and contraptions and stuff. And at the end of it is a little umbrella. Like, too small to, like, cover, like, any anything, uh, cover anybody in the rain. Mm -hmm. Pantaloons tears up. He says, thank you. I will cherish it always. <laughs> and he starts signing to Valletta. He says he wants you. He wants you to have. He wants you to have this. It's a. Uh, it, it can t detect uh, the the magic that keeps the uh, that keeps these uh, uh act, that keeps these nibble rights active. And she de and and she uh, she gestures for you to demonstrate. There's like a little trigger on the on the on the grip of the uh, of the device. Okay, Pantaloons is going to test a hypothesis he's had for the past hour or so, and he's going to point the device at Hitara and pull the trigger. <laughs> uh, it it starts to it starts to click and whir and buzz, and the little umbrella starts spinning at the end, but it doesn't spin very fast when you uh, point it at Hitara. What about when I point sure it again? Uh, uh, as, as, soon as, you, as soon as you did that, I also cast cast the command and said drop, 
<laughs> just, just, uh, just reactively. <laughs> like, oh boy. Like someone just put it. <laughs> yeah, that's just what my reaction is. And then I say, don't do that again. <laughs> Pick it up and point it again. Uh. As you guys are standing around, it becomes clear that as you point it further and further away from from Nim, it starts to spin slower. But as you point it closer and closer to him, it start the umbrella starts spinning faster and the clicking gets more rapid. I don't think it works. And Valetta says that's because it, it's because none of your friends are nibble rights, as near as I can tell. She says very dryly. Nancelins is a little disappointed. Just fun to me. Does it when you point at it? Is okay. I, I have to ask you this, McDowell, because I know you also watch Doctor Who. Uh oh. Does oh, is yeah. it a machine that goes ding? It is not a it 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 doesn't go ding. But it's kind of a machine that goes ding. Yes. Okay. In the presence of nimble rights. I ask. Like I have to. I have to. Sh I think I can find a picture of this of this of this thingy, and I can like put it on a tablet or something because. It it is very reminiscent of a Doctor Who device, yes. I I ask if Nim took anything from a gnome after the explosion. Uh he says no. He after the incident he went away very quickly. Uh he says he says that this is how it this is he says this is how it went down from his perspective. Another nimble right in House Grawlhun gave him this the necklace and told him to throw one of the beads at a gnome. He didn't no idea what it was going to do. And he threw it from the roof, yes. He threw it from the roof across the street, yes. And then as soon as he saw what had happened, he he bolted and went and he bolted, dropped the necklace in a dropped the necklace on the ground, or apparently in a rain barrel as as you as as <laughs> one of you found discovered from the child, and he 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 beat feet back to this uh back to this place. So you're so, the person who almost destroyed their inn. So this creature is actually guilty, mission solved. There's something more going on here. I want to figure this out. I, th I say we pay a visit to this um, lady. That would seem appropriate to me as well. I, I'm going to make sure Valletta is familiar with what happened in case the City Watch comes investigating as well. Uh, yeah, and... and uh... Uh, picking up on the context on the context of the conversation that she's signing back and forth with Nim and whatnot, she's kind of has an uh, an understanding of what 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 went down this morning, and she tells uh, and she says if there's if there's this other nibble right involved in this situation, that's not good for anyone in concern. Uh, if you if you if you want to track it down, then the House of Inspired Hands will pay you handsomely for its destruction and proof of it being destroyed. So this Nimorite is owned by, employed by a noble house, correct? House Grawland. And it tricked this Nimorite into murdering people, and then swooped down and grabbed and then looted the bodies and left. As if I am following the chain of events here. That's what seems to happen to he didn't okay. loot anything. He saw what it, he saw what had happened yeah. and just and, and was really scared and left. No, the other I nimble right. The other one jumped down and like cause somebody looted some took something from the bodies, right? And so, so who not did. as far as you know. Not as far as you know. I thought I someone told me that uh, the the puppet thing took something off a gnome. But oh, may, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I. I I, like I, my, I, I had wires too. crossed on my head. No, you're right. You're right. Okay. There was a. Yeah, I had my wires crossed. Okay, because like maybe they didn't. But it doesn't. It, it, but... it doesn't appear to that Nim was the one who took things. It was this other one, possibly. Yes. Right. 
And Great. I definitely want to know more about that. So I vote we go pay the Grovens a visit. I'll do it yesterday, so. On the way out, uh, Alton is going to ask the priestess if the uh, nimble rites are capable of playing pianos. <laughs> can they? Can, it's and, possible. Can they come with built-in pianos? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh -huh. mm. I don't know. I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, Ghent is interested in this handsome payment because, funnily enough, that's precisely what he offered uh, Vincent. Um, so what's next? Uh, we need to yeah, go to this manor. Uh, head to the manor. <laughs> okay. Um, and there are there are guards at the gates. Uh, and they ask you what your business is there? I bow formally to them and tell them that I wish to speak to Lady Grawhund on behalf of her friend Nim. Lady Graw Lady Grawhund is a fairly busy woman. I don't I don't know who you think you are, but I don't think you're the sort that would uh that she would associate with. He, he looks a little. He looks a little cocky at that. Surely she can make time for a message from her dear friend Nim. He can't uh, speak on his own, you know. Alton Guard very... rolls his eyes and uh, gestures. His one of his his compatriots goes inside. Anyone Gent do anything for wait. the next minute or two? Yeah, I'm going to pull out the umbrella stick and turn it on and point it all over the house. <laughs> uh, you're not actually allowed to get close to the house. Like, there's a yard in the Cool, area. point it, like, just stand at the street and point it up at the second story windows from down here. It does get a little bit of a reaction from inside the house. When you point it in the direction of the house, but you can't get you can't get more granular than that right now. Okay. Uh, the, one of the guards comes back. the The guard that left comes back and says, "Lady doesn't know any Nim. Move along." Pantaloons tries to convince him that the device that is spinning faster as he points it towards the house is a crime detector, <laughs> and that if he doesn't let us in to talk to her about. The crime we're detecting, we will have no choice but to tell the city guard about all the crime. I back off. <laughs> Get I, also I, steps back. Like, they do anymore. not... They do not believe you in the slightest. <laughs> crime detector. <laughs> all this is very loud, that, uh, very loudly that... Uh, what is her name? And he, he, he looks at... Uh, well, I was actually... Yeah, okay. So, uh... <laughs> Alton was like, uh... Alton says, Please, pl uh, please tell Lady Grand that we have... We know the whereabouts of her necklace. We're and not just... supposed to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could point right. her... Yeah, at this point, I'm just... Like, I'm just some passer by walking along, like, 50 meters away from you in the other direction. <laughs> the the I, guards I, don't appear to be convinced by, of, of anything like that. Whistling to myself like a jovial tune. So how are we going to sneak into this house under cover of darkness? Because we're not getting in this way, clearly. Uh, very no, poorly. Okay, okay I can't... I... In under penalty of years imprisonment. Yeah. Okay, pantalons. Uh, yes. I can I can make you you invisible. You're small, right? You can probably fit in some uh, some holes or something. Pantalons stands on his toes and puffs out his chest. It's not that small. <laughs> Are you having this conversation in front of the guards? I hope Hell not. No, no. Fi 50 meters away <laughs> like she said. Where you guys are not this 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 villa is not very far from your uh 
from your location. Is it yeah, on our map uh, here? Uh, it's not on your map, but I can give you a few details. Yeah. Uh, looks like the main gate. From... There's the main gate in which you. Uh, there's a main gate in which you were uh, conversing with the guards. Uh, there's a side. Uh, there's a side gate that looks to be for like freight deliveries and whatnot. And then there's a uh, there's a small door opening to the, to one of the side streets that appears to be barred. This panel is able to slip between the bars. Oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, barred, uh, barred from the inside, barricaded. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, what's Hitara's idea? So yeah, I feel like if it's close by, I probably would have went back into the inn. So I just hope you follow me there. But yeah, my idea is that yeah, um, his patrons is pretty small. Um, I could I could make him invisible, and then the rest of us could somehow provide a distraction to the guards. I can use a minor illusion or something of somebody someone trying to break in. Uh, and when you return to the when you return to the uh, inn and start making these discussions, it's not long before Raynar uh, Neverember comes actually comes in and uh, and, so, and he he he's uh, he's he's actually very he's very pleased to see a lot of you and says, "How's the business been going?" I get... Much better lately. <laughs> barkeep, give hear. our friend a chilly sunrise. <laughs> this poor barkeep. <laughs> It's like, I've been here for a month and I still don't know what that is. <laughs> I heard that there was a. I heard there was a. Uh, I heard there was there was an incident earlier this morning here. Shh, we're not supposed to know about that. And then wink again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was. We uncover some information about this. Uh, what happened? Uh, Gimp will, yeah, Gimp will invite Raynar into a more private room to discuss things and give him probably a... yeah, give him about okay. the same story he told Volo, uh, mostly focusing on the nimble rights. When you he doesn't seem to be he doesn't seem to really understand too much about the nimble rights, but when you mention the victims and that one of the victims was. Was uh, had that there was a gnome, and that one of the uh, one of the men had a had his entire symbol tattooed on his arm. He says he, he looks kind of concerned, and he says, "Well, I, I don't. I, I think that this <clears throat> when the wards when the lords of Waterdeep ousted my father, I thought that this that there's that there was something that just didn't uh, that was finally over, but unfortunately." My father's. My father has been sending me has spending been sending spies and and such after me spies and uh, because we, I've never I've never I never really got along with my father but about two ten days ago the spy that uh the spy that had been tailing me suddenly nowhere to be seen. My father didn't trust many people but he did trust that gnome. His name is Dalakar. I spoke to a few of his friends, and apparently he was on a special mission to retrieve the Stone of Galore. I mentioned that to you before. And he was afraid that the Zentarum and the Xanathar Guild were close to catching. When he heard about my kidnapping, he wanted more information about the adventurers who rescued me. I think Dalakar was planning to pay you a visit to deliver the stone to my father in Neverwinter. I think the stone is currently in House Grawland. Yeah, we might just need to help here. How so? Uh, do you do you know uh, of this um, house, Gro Gro Grothlan? Do you have any connections there? I don't. You're a lord. But I will. But I do know that. Uh, I do know that uh, I've. I, I have seen. I have heard reports that. Uh, that there's someone uh, that there's been someone coming and going uh, that I I I believe that he, I think he's a member of the Black Network. Naturally. 
city watch the city watch is uh the city watch spoke to the spoke to the to them but he said that everything was fine uh apparently there have been reports of a break-in but the the lord said no and that there hasn't been everything is wonderful everything was fine and that the 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 watch has the watch didn't really have grounds to investigate it so therefore they didn't push the matter pantaloons is going to point the umbrella stick at him and pull the trigger it does not start spinning that's too bad all right um what's so special about the stone of galore The Stone of Galore, apparent is a uh, is a is a magical relic. That hang on one second. My father, a, a few years ago, when my father was open lord of of the city, uh, the Z the Zentarum had thought that uh, he had embezzled. A large amount of a large amount of money. I mean, like a king's ransom. Did he? <laughs> I don't know. I bet he did. But but when I but when uh when I was kidnapped by the when I was captured by the Zenithar the, the Zentarum they they thought that uh I might have known something about it, which is why they you know they 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 grabbed me. But I want to help you get to the bottom of this. As, I want to help. I want. I, I want to get to the bottom of this as much as you do. So, are you willing to put your life at risk to do so? I just want to put this business between me and my father to bed. So this guy's a nobleman. Does he have any actual resources? Unfortunately, no. Since he kind of he he's left his he kind of left his his station and and title behind, basically because he and his father never really got on. Hmm. Does he have any? I guess contacts in the city. He's he's obviously been here longer than us, and is more of a man about town. Does he have anybody that it can look into, like what we know? Maybe, uh, maybe. Because this was a big, it, this was not a quiet thing. So no, maybe and somebody... that's kind of why he was, he was, that's kind of what he was spending most of the day doing, was kind of looking into this stuff and u using, you know, the, the, the context he does have. Because at this point, like, because we told the, did we, did, did we tell the guard that, I'm trying to remember, did, does the guard know that they're, like, because somebody ran, grabbed something from the dead gnome and left. And like we're assuming that it's the the what's his it's name the, the robot right. guy yeah yeah but uh, maybe if we had if if we could get some definitive proof we could use that to get into the uh, Grawlhund villa without you sounds know like, it breaking sounds like the law any, any information that you do have would be in Grawlhund villa. I mean, yeah, the problem is I'm not sure that would get us into the villa. I feel like that would get two guardsmen into the villa and then promptly escorted out of the villa with assurances that absolutely nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, plan B is we cast invisibility on pantaloons and Gent throws him over the fence. How's there's, that for plan B? There's nothing wrong with this idea. This is absolutely fine. <laughs> I, I could okay. Yeah. Really Pantaloons has a plus seven acrobatics. He he can <laughs> stick the landing. I'm not worried. Okay, let's go ahead and take a 15 minute break, and we'll come back and we'll see how this plan goes out. <laughs> <laughs>